Hey guys and welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a self destroy frame in Roblox. So if you join a game and you're s and you and you like have a shop and you want it to count down and then just like just then just leave from the screen without the player clicking on a button or anything, it just automatically leaves. And this is the tutorial for you. So before we get started, be sure to like and subscribe, and let's get into it. So for your first step, we're going to head over to View, Explorer, and Properties, and that should open up Explorer and Properties. Um, either there, it could be anywhere on your screen, but then in Starter GUI, we're going to add a, if you hover over the Starter GUI, there should be a plus, and we're going to add a Screen GUI as you can see that just added and then go to your properties and change the name to destroy GUI and then we're gonna add a frame and this frame will can be named destroy frame or whatever you want it to be named really and then we're gonna add um well we're not gonna really add anything actually at this point we're just gonna make this kinda like customizable um, you can customize your own uh, frame here, so I'm just going to put text kind of where I uh, want this to go. So let's see, so here we have a text label, and we can add like an image label, so say this is like actually a shop or something. We can like have a shop with like icons for the game passes right here. And then we can add like a text button for the buy button which I can also uh, show you guys how to do in this video if you want to learn how to make a uh, like a buy game pass button so I'm just gonna edit this gonna change the background uh, color to just a green color and then I'm gonna change text stroke transparency to zero gonna scale the text and I'm gonna change this to buy add an exclamation mark at the end why not and then I'm going to change this background color to 017255, which changes it to a nice uh, blue color, like that. And then I'm going to change this. I'm going to just pick a random font. So that's the font we got here. And now I'm going to do um, new deals. Like, say this is just a pop-up in your game, um, showing you the new deals here. Uh, I did not mean to do that change that back to black and I'm gonna do this to white for the text color the text stroke transparency kinda adds a um, border to your text and I'm gonna change this background transparency of this in general to this I'm just size this again and there we go and now I'm just gonna change just this and I can choose a file just to really anything and then I can change this and I can just add another angry face there and there we go we have our nice new deals section here and now let's get to the countdown so let's um add a countdown somewhere here on this so let's add a text label and put it like right here again you can put this anywhere you want if you want to or I can just copy my ideas here and there we go now I'm gonna name this text label um, countdown, just count downs the um, frame, and then we we'll do loading countdown for the normal text, and we're gonna scale this as well. And I'm gonna change the text color to the uh, like a nice cyan color, and we're gonna change the transparency to that, like what we've been doing. Change to make this a little bigger. Change the background transparency just a bit, and we can now add a, a new font here. This is a nice little font for the situation here. And now what we're going to do is we are going to do we're going to do the scripting guys. So this is how it literally makes the thing destroy. Now I came up with this own script on my own of course and there's probably there could be easier ways to do the countdown parts that takes less short, but I'm just going to do the easy like just a simple way that to teach you guys. So what we're going to do in the script, we're actually going to add a local script inside the destroy frame. So local script and just hover over at a local script. And then we're going to get started. So we're going to do local frame equals script.parent. We're going to create a variable script.parent is just getting where the script is. Like, like that's getting the destroy frame instead of typing a bunch of other stuff. 
and then we can do local um, local um, countdown uh, no let's just do local text like this equals script dot parent so we can do actually we could do frame dot uh, countdown it doesn't matter you could do frame dot countdown or script dot parent dot um, countdown I'll just do script dot parent dot countdown then we can enter down a couple of lines doesn't matter if you enter down or not then we can do if if um, frame dot visible equals true then this right here does if the frame is visible then um, so if the frame is visible then it will perform whatever we add under here just like just a normal statement once you enter down that it should form an end if it doesn't you might have done something wrong make sure there's two equal signs um, which just shows that it's equal like in Roblox coding you can do this which means less than or equal to this means greater than or equal to and this means equal to right there just like your basic math I'm sure you probably learned about greater than or equal to signs I in fact I did today so for like domain and range but out of the math topic we're gonna do um, just basic um, performances so we're gonna print it right there this print will show up in the output in order to get the output you can go to view output but then what we're gonna do is we can print um, countdown will start in about 15 seconds and then dot 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 and then what we're going to do is text.text .text. so this automatically changes the text of the countdown so text.text .text equals um, countdown in five seconds or we can do countdown soon now let's just do countdown soon dot 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 and then we could do is the wait five so that stays up for five seconds and then we do text dot text equals ten so say you want a ten second countdown and then we can do this text and then we just basically repeat this if you want you can copy and paste and fill the numbers in but we just do the wait one every time and just like this and there we go just keep on doing this so this is changing the text of the script.parent.countdown, which is the countdown in our frame, just like this. And if you guys are having issues with this, just join our Discord server. It's the Sour Studios Discord, which is my studio in Roblox. And you join that and apply for the scripting, which is just reacting to a message and then you will automatically have the scripting role which gives you access to the uh, scripting channels which um, usually within the day I will respond or someone else will respond and I can easily help because this is mine of course and then what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna let it go to zero you can either stop it at one but I'm gonna let it go to zero and then what we can do is wait point five and then text and then we can do frame colon destroy and then this with the uh, just destroying the frame or you could do script or you can do not script but frame dot visible equals false but I'm gonna do destroy since we're completely destroying the frame from existence and then we can do wait point one and then we can also print that the frame has been destroyed just like that. Now we'll print in the output. And there is our 33 line script. Of course, this takes up like 22 lines, just this. And I'm sure there's some other easier way to do it. But yeah, and if you want to give me credit, just do the two dashes, which doesn't affect anything in the script. If you do two dashes, it's just a comment. Uh, script by its polar, like that. And yeah, here we are. Here is our shop section. And let's see if the countdown works. So let's let it load here into Roblox Studio. And it will start. Now, if it says loading, no, it does not say loading countdown, which was our uh, original text. There it is, guys. The countdown is performing. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 and destroys right after zero 
There we go, the frame. And look at in our output, guys. You see the countdown will start in about 15 seconds, which is what happened when the frame became visible. And then we do the frame has been destroyed, and that happened right when the frame was destroyed. There we go, guys. And now, if you guys really wanted me to do this, we can just uh, do our buy button. If you guys were just something a little extra. So in here, you can add a local script, do local MPS. Actually, we can make this a little simpler script dot parent dot mouse button one click colon connect function. And then if you want to learn how to just create a game pass, go ahead and look at other videos. And I'm sure there's millions of videos that teach you how to just create a game pass and get IDs and stuff. We can do game after this on the second line game colon get service marketplace service colon prompt game pass purchase like that. And then in these uh, parentheses, game dot players dot local player, and then the ID. Which here, in order to find an ID, what you have to do is you have to go ahead and look in your game passes. So in this case, I'm just going to use my uh, Sour Racing Sour Circuit game. And in game passes, there should be a game pass. Uh, maybe I never even created a game pass in this game looks like I didn't so but either way if you go ahead oh I know I have developer products in that game but let's go to one of these games here object simulator has like 10 game passes so this one here it's been updated since a month so Still got some work to do on this. A lot of players. Big support on this one. Currently loading. Now let's click on a game. Here's the ID. So maybe we could just copy this in here. And we could just replace it for this. There we go. Add the space. And you can just duplicate this for your other text button if you have another text button. And now let's see if that worked. That's all you need. It's a simple script for something that seems very hard. You can make it harder by making variables for an ID, which I can teach you if you want. There it is. You, we, I, of course, already own that item. There's the countdown, which is going. Now we go to, we can do, we can create variables. If you want to create variables, you can do local MPS, choose games, colon, get service, marketplace service, local player equals game dot players dot local player. And then you could do local ID equals the ID and script dot parent dot mouse button one click colon connect function MPS colon prompt game pass purchase player ID and you can do that. It's really I guess the same length, but to me it's just quicker the other way. But it looks more professional if you do this because you are creating variables. Variables really just shorten what you're trying to get done. There you guys go. Hopefully this helped you guys if you are looking for something. And I'm going to just make, how about, well, let's just do this. So this text button here will close the frame. If instead you want a close button, so the player just automatically closes it, which a lot of people like. Just do script. Uh, this is probably the easiest script you can do. Mountain button, one click, colon, connect, function. And then script.parent.parent.visible equals false. And that will just close the button. And you could make it an X with a red background. But in this case, we're not going to do that. But that is it for this video, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe. Here's the studio. Goodbye.